That radio chick Cheryl Lee here. Welcome to the Still Rocking It podcast where we'll have music, news reviews and interviews with some of our favourite Australian musicians and artists. Legends of Rock unite on stage. You ask for it, they are back. Nine dates across the country in October, Thursday the 10th of October at the Norwood Town Hall in Adelaide. Get onto the Googleometer to snag your tickets. Russell Morris says that someone jokingly referred to them as the greatest of all time, or GOAT, G-O-A-T, but they didn't want to appear egotistical, so they replaced the acronym with the Italian word for GOAT, Capretto. Hence, the fabulous Capretto's were born. We speak to the youngest and newest Capretto, Dave Gleeson, previously 12-year frontman of the Angels and frontman of the Screaming Jets, in his other job as a GOAT and find out all the goat goss. To catch up on podcasts from other favourite artists, simply go to that radiochick.com.au. How are you going? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. That's good. We have to stop meeting like this, Dave. <laughs> uh, zooming, it's all the rage. We'll get stuck into it, shall we? Let's. You're with Cheryl Lee, and I'd like to welcome into the Zoom room today, Dave Gleeson, the guy who needs no introduction. Hey, Cheryl Lee, how you doing? Good, thank you. You are hot off a great gig with your friend Swanee last week, and if we can just talk about that for a quick moment sure. before we talk about what we're here to really discuss, which is your boy band. The set with Swanee was full of killer songs, including the one that you sing with him on his album. Am I right in saying that was the first time that's been sung live? Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, I'd only heard it for the first time just before I recorded it for Swanee. Uh, I didn't know it was a Santana song. I thought it was one of his songs. But yeah, and then to get up and play it live was bloody, was unreal, fantastic. That answers my next question because I actually didn't recognise it and I thought, oh, is that a cover or is, you know, who wrote it? So it's a Santana song. Yeah, yeah, that's the version that uh, we were doing was a uh, the Santana version. So it's nice when you discover songs like that you, that you've never heard before that uh, that you feel like you kind of should have heard before, you know. Yeah, exactly. But I can't get that at the minute to play on the radio yet, can I? Uh, not yet, no. I think Swanee's looking at releasing in the next couple of months for uh, for his album. So uh, I can't wait to hear it. He's done duets with a bunch of other people as well. So uh, it's great. Not 72 years old, out there still making music. It's It's bloody phenomenal. I know, right? Well, we're talking about who wrote songs because I play your one and only solo album on the radio all the time. But one question I've never asked you is where those songs came from. Yeah, well, I've always been a um, a country fan and it seems that when I write songs, they generally uh, have that country flavour to them. That's mostly because I'm a terrible guitar player and uh, I find it hard to come up with chord structures and arrangements that are anything more than kind of quite simple. But, yeah, I, I love writing songs um, that kind of uh, doing country stuff kind of gives you more scope to be honest, whereas when you're writing rock songs, you've got to be a bit more metaphorical and kind of use cool, funky terminology, whereas country you say, my dog died, that's, you know, uh, my dog died and I'm sad. <laughs> and my so, wife ran away with the truck. Yeah, it's a, it's a much simpler art form for me. And, uh, I mean, I, I do love writing rock songs, but I generally when I write rock songs, I need to collaborate with someone. So, yeah, those songs come straight from the heart. That is amazing. I mean, so you, when you write alone, write in the key of country then. Yeah, yes. that's exciting. They are all beautiful songs. And sometimes when I'm sitting alone at Coast FM playing them, especially um, those rusty train tracks, you know, I get a tear in my eye. They really, they really are personal and heartfelt and sad. Yeah, well, that one especially. I, I, uh, I actually, I tried to, um, to work out whether I could play it live, and I can't. I, I cry too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and the audience, we can all cry together. Yeah. <laughs> you are listening to Still Rocking It, the podcast with Cheryl Lee. Here it is, right now, the song I've been talking about. Get your tissues. Those Rusty Train Tracks, written and performed by Dave Gleeson on his Wanted Man debut solo album. And we'll be back to speak some more to Dave shortly. That 
That's where my mama lies buried At the end of those rusty train tracks It don't take very long to walk down there But I may be a while coming back I never go down there myself much Cause it fills me with sorrow so deep So I lie in my bed, talk to her in my head And she sends me off into my sleep And I still see the funeral as clear as a bell I still have the pain in my soul Cause a woman so happy to love me at all Should have had half a chance to grow That's where my mama lies buried At the end of those rusty train tracks It won't take very long to walk down there But I may be a while coming back There's a grief in my heart I haven't dealt with And I'm doubting that I ever will Cause the pain that I felt at her graveside That's a pain that I can feel still She was taken away oh so quickly There was nothing that no one could do So I sit and I cry, oh, so Lord above, why was it something he thought it should do? That's where my mama lies buried, at the end of those rusty train tracks. It don't take very long to walk down there, but I may be a while coming back. So forgive me, dear mama, each time Each time that you see me pass by But I can't bring myself to accept it at all Because that would be saying goodbye Oh, that's where my mama lies buried At the end of those rusty train tracks It don't take very long to walk down there But I may be a while coming back What we're really here to talk about is your boy band, The Fabulous Capretos. Can you it. wrap them up in a quick minute? What it's all about is that I get to hang out with absolute legends of the music industry, Russell Morris, Jack Jones, Ray Thistlethwaite, and I hear Joe Camilleri's uh, doing a couple of shows on this run as well. We all sing our own songs, probably three or four songs each, but the difference between uh, the Capretos and a lot of other things we see, uh, shows with like multiple singers, we all actually stay on stage and accompany each other, harmonise with each other. I play tambourine for everyone's uh, listening enjoyment, um, but it really is, it, it's, it's great fun. We're so interconnected. I did some shows at the start of the year and had so much fun. I can't wait to be doing it again. Well, we can't wait, and you are coming to the Norwood Town Hall on the 10th of October. It's a Thursday night. Get onto the Googleometer people and get your tickets before it sells out. So you've collaborated recently with Swanee, chatted to a great collaborator of yours uh, just recently, Crafty, and you've got these guys in the boy band. But if you could choose anybody, alive or dead, that you could collaborate with, who would you choose? Oh, it would have to be Bond. I mean, I'd love to. Um, I would love to be able to incorporate Bond's cheekiness into my lyrics. It's. Uh, I mean, knowing that he was like thirty when he died, 
and I'm 20-something years older than he made it to, I still can't believe his turn of phrase. It was just so unique. So to this day, it's still so very fresh. He was one of a kind. So to be able to to sit there and put my head together with Bond and come up with some uh, some good tongue-in-cheek yet not cringeworthy lyrics uh, would be my dream. Oh, and he could wear his jeans pretty tight too, yeah. couldn't he? Just from the female I- perspective. <laughs> Well, my favourite bit of footage is when they're um, they did a thing for Countdown when they were over in the UK, and it films them running down the street, you know, just all, all dressed in their normal clothes. Normal clothes for Bond was no shirt, thongs, and tiny, tiny little cut off jeans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him! He could pull it off though. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. You know what? He'd be, he'd be famous now. They've got that. Um, uh, that rat boy look that's become sexy. He's got rat boy all over him. <laughs> yeah, he's timeless, is our Bond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, speaking of timeless, Russell, one of your greatest of all time, Russell Morris, he's 76. Joe, your guest goat, also 76. Glenn Shurrock's 80. Brian Cat 77. John, as we said, is 72. So awesome. you're a babe. You're 56. Have you got another 20 years in you, you reckon? You're still going to be rocking? <laughs> I hope so. I mean, seeing those guys do it, I was talking to a friend last night just about how lucky we are that all those, or so many of those bands and artists that made the Australian music scene what it was in the late 70s and all through the 80s, they're still out there playing. You know, James Rain's still out there, uh, Dragon is still out there, Choir boys are still doing it, and, and it really does give you. And the Angels, of course, they're they're, they're in the seventies as well. To see those guys still uh, going around is is it gives me kind of a, a drive and, and makes me think, yeah, you can do it as long as you look after yourself a bit better than you are. <laughs> Ex goat Daryl, of course, we just saw yeah. him at Monday Monday. He's still he's still got it, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. I uh, I saw him at, two years ago. We were doing the bash, and uh, and he was there, and the crowd kept yelling out, play horses, play horses. <laughs> and there were a lot of young people there. Then he'd start, you know, one summer or something, and the crowd would go nuts anyway because those songs really are so well known across generations that it's uh, he is an absolute icon. That's when they said, do you want to fill in for Daryl? I was like, I don't know horses. Have you learned it yet? Because can I put in a request? I'd like the rest of you goats to play horses in, uh, honor. in tribute. Yeah, that's right. Of the, of the can, left member. I'll see what I can do. They can play anything, obviously. It's a, a great band. Uh, Jackie Barnes, I don't know if he's playing drums with us this time, but he was with us last time. He's he's uh, obviously a fantastic drummer, but uh, yeah, the bass player, the, the whole band is fantastic. So, Rafe Thistlethwaite, just for a special mention, that guy is a freak. He's a bit of a genius, isn't he? He is. He's just, he, he works on Ray time. He's just absolutely, I could watch him all night. If you do manage to twist their arm and get a version of horses on, don't do the 12 minute version that no, no. Daryl used to do when he was in the Capretto. <laughs> you had time to go to the loo, get a drink, and go to the loo again. And still sing the last choruses. <laughs> still rocking the podcast with that radio chick, Cheryl Lee. Every single time I speak to Ray or Russell or Jack or Dave from the Capretto's and of course Daryl. I've played Horses, his version, not the 12 minute version mind you, but today let's have the original shall we? Ricky Lee Jones, the Horses and this version is hers from the Jerry Maguire Motion Picture soundtrack and then back to speak to Dave again. You fall, pick you up, pick you up. If you fall, pick I don't want to railroad you, so I'm giving you two choices okay. about your fellow goats. You can either tell me one thing that we might not know about each member or <laughs> you know, what happens in the Capretto stays in the Capretto and you can't tell me. Then you can fall back to what is your favourite thing about what? each of the members. Okay. Right. Well, I don't know if everyone knows about Ray, but uh, he is not just big here. He is so sought after around the world. He's currently over there playing with Sammy Hagar and uh, Michael Anthony out of uh, out of Van Halen. They're off there doing some Sammy Hagar Van Halen shows. He was on with Steve Vai and Joe Satriani <laughs> recently. So he's like a 
he is world class, uh, our Ray. Now, Russell Morris, I love Russell Morris. I met him through the Angels where we're playing uh, Red Hot Summer. Um, but my favourite thing about Russ is one day I walked in, we were up at the Birdsville Bash and we we're all having dinner. I walked in and, and Russell said, here comes my favourite Australian singer. Oh. And from that time on, he's held a very special place in my heart. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. And Jack Jones, well, Jack Jones is the mo- is an absolute sweetheart. He is uh, he's full of hugs and just well, the fact that he's one of the greatest guitarists Australia's ever produced and has that voice as uh, everyone knows. But he is an absolute sweetheart. Oh, nice. I don't know if you can get your people to speak to their people, but I tried to buy a um, Capretto's T-shirt online. No, I know there was Capretto's chocolates. <laughs> when we did the shows earlier in the year. Uh, I did, did not know. I'll have to ask about that. I'll have to ask our, um, the merchandise department. Yes, because for Support Act each year I do the T-shirt challenge. I've done it, I think, for the last five years, and last year I wore 60 T-shirts. Right, you cut off your circulation. Yeah, just about. I got them on and then I'm like to my son and my husband, quick, get them off. I realise I don't have a Capretto's T-shirt, so I'll just put in my order for that, if I may. No worries. Speaking of T-shirts, I was going to wear my Screaming Jets T-shirt, but I don't want to wear it because I realise all you guys have signed it, including Paul, and I don't want to wash it. No, that's uh, that's one to keep for sure, for sure. I bet you're missing him sort of this time of year. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up for a year now. Um, you know, kind of, yeah, it's, you kind of take a bit of stock of what's happened in the last 12 months and uh, how we've been able to kind of uh, continue on and find a ray of hope in the, uh, you know, in the fact that we've got Paul Elliott uh, playing bass for us now. He's been a real spark and brought something along that kind of, well, certainly re-inspired me anyway. So, yeah, it's a... Coming up for a year is, uh, I can't believe that it's been a year, but um, it seems like, you know, last week really. Um, but, yeah, he'll always be uh, in our hearts and, and our minds, old Paulie. We'll have to have a fireball in his honour. Yes, me one fireball for the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You are listening to Still Rocking It, the podcast with Cheryl Lee. We're going to have a song that Paul wrote. In fact, he wrote it with Brian Cadd. It's Time from the Chrome album in 2016. We miss you, Paulie. Back to speak to Dave again after this. It's a couple of beers since I heard that little voice. That bass and still kicks me round. We were talking earlier about longevity. So you're going to have to look after yourself. You had a little incident recently and had to take some time off. Actually, I'd had a a, a hernia for a long time and it was just getting a bit bigger and I was having to, you know, push it in after I hit me big notes. Did your hand stands on the stage? And because it's an operation where, you know, it's right in the core, you just can't do anything. So I kind of, there's been stuff that I've needed done over the over the years, but you kind of, um, you know, put it off and put it off until you can find a, a bit of uh, a, a gap in the, in the calendar. But, uh, yeah, we had to take eight weeks off, which is probably the longest I've uh, never sung for in my life. But, yeah, all good now, 100%. Doctor said it's the best one he's ever done. (laughs) (laughs) Of course it is. Was it affecting your singing? Has it affected your singing since the operation? Um, It wasn't affecting my singing, but since the operation, I've I've probably done – I reckon about eight gigs now, and I'm I'm pretty well back to back to normal. At first, I was a little bit kind of gun shy of pushing down in that area, but no, nah, it's all uh, it's all 100% hunky dory. So uh, I'm ready for the next 30 years or so <laughs> of performing. <laughs> Good on you. Good to know that we've got you know a lot of years of Dave Gleason left. <laughs> Great tambourining, by the way, with Swanee the other night. I do have the guitar on and do a bit of accompaniment on a guitar when I'm up there, but um, as I said before, my guitaring is a bit limited. So any song I don't know how to play on the guitar, out comes the tambourine. And when you play tambourine and bang it on your leg, you've got to do it with conviction, um, and that leads to big bruises on your leg. I've actually got a small one from the other night, 
But uh, I'm contemplating. I'm hoping that I'll have a uh, a beauty to show all the fans when I'm on the road with the Capretos. I'm just offering my services. I'm not cheap, but I'm good. If you need a backup tambourine, here we go. Oh, I'm your woman. Oh, that's a good one too. I- I've only got the Half Moon Stevie Nicks style tambourine. You've got- I noticed. I thought, oh, I should have brought you my professional looking one. You've got the full Josie and the Pussycats looking one. I think that belongs to one of the Master's Apprentices, the drummer. Oh, okay. Brian <laughs> Vaughton, he lent it to me and I've never given it back. That's right. That's the music business for you. <laughs> that's right, right. That's probably my question, Dave. Was there anything else that you wanted to cover? No, that's all fine, thanks. That's perfect. All right, well, you look after yourself. Thanks yeah. again um, for spending some time with me again. No. Did you look at the list and go, oh, my God, not her again? No, absolutely not. I love it. <laughs> See you down the front at the Norwood. No worries, Dale. Thanks very much. Still off the podcast with that radio chick, Cheryl Lee. Oh, remember Josie and the Pussycats on Saturday mornings back in the 70s? Animated TV series based on the Archie comic. Let's play the theme song. Thanks to Hannah Barbera Productions and Archie Comics. I'll take the tambourine connection. Thank you very much. Josie and the Pussycats. Long tails and ears perhaps. You're with Cheryl Lee, that radio chick. Thank you so much for joining me on the Still Rocking It podcast. Hope to catch you again next time. Get out when you can, support Aussie music, and I'll see you down the front.